Hello and welcome to the domestic hot water module of HVAC 101. As an HVAC technician, part of your job is going to be installing, repairing, and servicing domestic hot water systems. Domestic hot water is potable water that is heated to be used for cooking, cleaning, and bathing. Potable water is water that is considered safe enough to be consumed by humans. The four most common domestic hot water systems you will encounter are direct fired water heaters, indirect fired hot water heaters, tankless coils which insert directly into a boiler, and tankless direct fired hot water heaters. Direct fired hot water heaters store 20 or more gallons of hot water in the storage tank. Hot water comes from the top of the tank while a cold water line at the bottom of the tank replenishes it. Depending on the type of fuel the water heater uses, some form of burner warms the cold water entering the tank. With the gas system, a thermostat opens the gas valve as the water temperature falls. And the gas, under, gas burner under the tank heats the water. The valve closes when the temperature rises to its desired temperature. Oil-fired hot water heaters operate similarly. They have a power burner that mixes oil and air in a vaporizing mist, which is ignited by an electric spark, which in turn makes a flame which ends up heating the hot water. A typical electric hot water heater is wired for 220 volts AC power. To heat the water, the current passes through electrical resistance heating elements. Usually there's two one in the middle tank and one at the bottom. Power is delivered to each element through a thermostat, which is a switch that senses the water temperature. When the temperature drops, the switch closes to allow current flow, and it opens when the temperature reaches its preset limit. Thermostats have a dial for setting the maximum water temperature. Indirect water heaters work like a direct fired water heater, but instead of having its own burner, indirect water heater uses the home's boiler to heat the water that passes through a cold pipe called a heat exchanger that is in the storage tank. Indirect water heaters allow the burner to turn off and on less, saving you energy. Because of this, indirect water heaters tend to be the more efficient option than a tankless coil or direct fired water heater. Tankless coils use the heat from a boiler to transfer heat to the domestic water. The coil is actually bolted into the boiler, but it's an entirely separate system. The coil itself is basically a long run of copper tubing with fins cut into the outside of it. The inlet and outlet of the coil are only a few inches apart from one another, but there's quite a bit of pipe in between. By the time the cold water gets through all the pipe, it comes out very hot on the other side. Tankless direct fired water heaters heat water directly without use of a storage tank. When a hot water tap is turned on, Cold water travels through a pipe into the unit. Either a gas burner or an electric, or electric heating element heats the water. As a result, tankless water heaters deliver a constant supply of hot water. You don't need to wait for a storage tank to fill up with enough hot water. However, a tankless water heater's output limits the flow, is limited by the flow rate. Typically, a tankless water heater provides hot water at a rate of 2 to 5 gallons per minute. Gas-fired Tankless hot water heaters produce higher flow rates than electric ones. Sometimes, however, sometimes, excuse me, however, even the largest gas-fired model cannot supply enough hot water for simultaneous multiple uses in large households. For example, taking a shower and running the dishwasher at the same time can stretch a tankless water heater to its limit. To overcome this problem, you can install two or more tankless water heaters connected in parallel for simultaneous demands of hot water. You can also install separate tankless water heaters for appliances, such as a clothes washer or dishwasher that use a lot of hot water in your home. I am now going to explain some of the parts you will find on different domestic hot water systems. On all the systems discussed so far, with the exception of the direct fired tankless water heater, you will find a thermostatic mixing valve. A thermostatic mixing valve is a valve that blends hot water with cold water to ensure constant safe shower and bath outlet water temperatures to prevent scalding. The storage of water at high temperatures 
removes one possible breeding ground for bacteria. It is increasingly common practice around the world to regulate the storage water temperature to above 140 degrees and to circulate or distribute water at a temperature less than 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Many countries, states, or municipalities now require that the temperature of all bath water in newly built and extensively refurbished domestic housing properties, and also commercial, be controlled to a maximum water temperature of 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Installing thermostatic mixing valves can ensure that the water is delivered at the required temperature. It also reduces hot water consumption from a supply line that was maintained at a higher temperature by blending cold water with it. The absolute most important function of this device is to prevent the scalding. Especially with older people and young children, scalding can be a serious, serious injury, even leading to death. Heat traps are valves or loops of pipe installed on the cold water inlet and hot water outlet pipes on water heaters. The heat traps allow cold water to flow into the hot water tank, but prevent unwanted convection and heated water to flow out of the tank. Most new water heaters have built-in heat traps. For water heating equipment that does not re already have factory installed heat traps, they must be purchased or installed within the piping with a 8 inch minimum depth of a heat trap at the inlet and outlet connections. Heat traps are very simple and inexpensive and they are an effective way to prevent cooling of hot water in water heaters by thermal siphoning. Thermal siphoning Thermal siphoning is based on natural convection. Hot water rises it is then displaced by cold water. The heat trap stops this process, thus keeping the hot water inside the insulated storage tank. A vacuum relief valve is a simple device that prevents collapse of a water heater or storage tank. It is required on bottom feed water heaters or top feed water heaters without a dip tube that has an anti-siphon hole in it. That is a installed part from the factory. It's a little hole that's actually drilled into the top of the, uh, of the dip tube going into the water heater. If the building's water line were to shut down, the system can back siphon the cold water line. The vacuum relief valve is located above the water heater and will open the atmosphere when a back siphon or vacuum occurs on the tank. This allows air to enter at the vacuum relief valve and the heater slash tank will not be drained down. This protects the heaters from dry firing the elements or burner and can also prevent the tank from collapsing due to vacuum. The next device is a thermostat and pressure relief valve, also called the TP valve. This valve protects the water heater by just discharging water when the water inside the heater reaches excessively hot temperatures or high pressures. The temperature setting for it is typically 210 degrees Fahrenheit and the pressure setting is 150 pounds per square inch gauge. This is an excellent indicator of whether or not the water heater is functioning properly. If the water heater is operating normally there should be no water discharged from the TMP valve. If the valve seems to be discharging water that's an indication that there's a problem with the system. There are several reasons the system could be discharging water including but not limited to the following. Thermal expansion of the water as it's heated, excessive system pressure, high tank temperature due to high setting or a defective thermostat, and also it could just be a failed temperature pressure valve that's leaking. Most water heaters have an anode rod immersed into the water heater through the top of the water heater. The anode rod is often, often returned, referred to as a sacrificial rod. Most water is really pure. It can contain oxygen, magnesium, fluoride, chlorine, and suspended particles. These components and the concentrations in your water are usually not bad for you, but they imp impart a slight conductivity to the water. Through an electrical process called electrolysis, this conductivity will eventually cause most metal to corrode. When the water is heated, this electrical process can be accelerated. Most water heaters are made of a steel tank with a porcelain enamel, kind of like a glass lining. However, due to produ production and assembly methods, it is not always possible to completely cover the inside of the tank. Therefore, it's important to provide metal that can be consumed 
by the electrical process. This is where the sacrificial anode rod comes in play. By acting as a lightning rod for the corrosion process, the anode rod draws the harmful electrolytic, electro, electrolytic process away from the water heater tank and focuses the corrosion on the anode rod. Most hot water heaters will have some sort of a thermostat to tell its heat source when to turn off and on to maintain a preset hot water temperature. Electric hot water heaters have two heating elements immersed into the water and they also have two thermostats which will work into conjunction to turn off and on the elements to maintain a preset temperature. The gas fired heater, hot water heater, instead of having electrical resistance elements, uses a gas valve that it will turn on and off through a thermostat which is dependent upon what the water temperature is. When the gas valve opens it starts basically a fire underneath the hot water tank. In an oil fired heater the burner, is, the burner is similar to what's found on an oil-fired furnace or boiler, so that when a thermostat that's immersed inside the hot water heater calls for heat, it will turn on the burner, which will heat the hot water up, eventually raising it to set point, shutting off the burner. All hot water heaters have some sort of thermostat to tell the heating source when to turn on and off to maintain a certain water temperature. An electric water heater thermostat tells the heating elements when to heat up. Most electric hot water tanks have two elements and two thermostats. The elements do not heat up at the same time. The top element heats the water first and then the bottom element kicks in. The upper thermostat acts as a coordinator between the two elements. When the water in the top part of the tank is hot enough, it lets the lower thermostat go into action. When the lower thermostat senses the water is too cool, it turns on the lower element. This happens only after the upper element That's very complicated.